Hello everybody and welcome to the Tennessee Titans franchise. I am very excited to bring this to you finally and this is our introductory episode as I am going to work my way through here how I got things set up, look at our roster, look at our first opponent and uh, hope that you guys are excited as I am to get this thing started. If you haven't had a chance to check out my trailer for this series, you really should. It's a lot of fun, and I had a lot of fun making it. Uh, so please check that out here on my channel. Um, as we uh, have been doing, we've been testing a lot of sliders here, and I ultimately made my decision, and I decided to go with armor and swords sliders. So if you've kind of been following me and following our slider testing, that is my final decision. At least as of right now, we're going to start this series uh, with those sliders. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check his out on Operation Sports, please do so. I have put the link down in the description. So that way, uh, if you're curious, if you're liking what you're seeing on my gameplay and you want to try it out, then you can go do that. What that also means, though, is that we are going to be using IMAX rosters. Uh, and we're also going to be editing, obviously, our CPU running backs uh, on Juke and Spin down to 75. I really wanted to try to avoid that, but ultimately, Armor and Sword sliders are just providing the most fun for me, most enjoyment of the game. Uh, so that's why I decided to go with his, and we're going to follow his to a T. Uh, I did think about changing things up, switching things up slightly, and, uh, and I did a couple of tests, that, tests with that offline, and I just didn't enjoy it. Uh, as much so we're not going to do that we're going to run with his sliders as is uh, so again uh, if you want to check his out uh, please uh, check out the description the link is there for you to follow uh, and then you can try to do here exactly what i am doing um, as you can see here i have decided to go with a coach here in this franchise and i have decided to create mike vrabel who is actually coach from the Tennessee Titans, uh, unfortunately, you know, there are only so many options for uh, creating your coach. And this to me was the best option for Vrabel. It, I mean, at least the face structure maybe sort of looks like his. You know, I, I know he's got a little bit of a beard, at least in all the pictures I've seen, he's got a beard. And But all of the guys that had beards as your templates for creating a coach looked absolutely nothing like him. Uh, so I decided that this was the closest rendition that I can come up with. So that is what we're going to go with. I hope you guys like it. So, uh, again, we're going with Mike Vrabel as our coach and we're going here with the Tennessee Titans looking to face the Miami Dolphins in our first game of the season. I did actually start this franchise in the preseason, just kind of simulated through those games just because I wanted to make my own cuts. Uh, I didn't like, you know, how the CPU was doing it in some of my test franchises that I did uh, with the Titans. So I decided that I wanted to make my own cuts and I also wanted to make some adjustments. Uh, and so as you can kind of see here, we've made our cuts, nothing that is very exciting, nothing that I felt like was necessary uh, really to share with you guys. Uh, it was a bunch of bottom of the barrel guys that just really didn't matter anyway. Uh, so ultimately, again, I didn't feel like it was necessary uh, and or I didn't think you would care to watch me do a bunch of cuts. So <laughs> so let's just take a look at where our squad is right now. Uh, taking a quick look at the roster. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the roster. Obviously, some contract issues and or concerns moving forward. Uh, we're going to start here at quarterback. Obviously, we've got Marcus Mariota. He's our quarterback. He's the one that we're going to move forward with. We'll continue and hope that he continues to get better. If not, uh, then maybe we'll think about making a change, but that's definitely not going to happen this season or probably even next season. Uh, but we'll just have to see how he continues to progress. Again, it's only his third year in the league. I think he's only going to get better. Uh, so we're going to continue to roll with Mariota here. Uh, as we look at halfback, we've got Dion Lewis, Derrick Henry, Wadley, and Fluellen. Uh, obviously, Lewis and Henry are our top guys. We've got Lewis in as our starting halfback, Derrick Henry in as our power halfback. Uh, and we're just going to have to hope for no injuries <laughs> because I don't know that Wadley is really quite ready to step in. Uh, maybe we would have to think about making a signing if there really was an injury to happen. 
Uh, but we're just going to have to hope for the best. My guess is we're probably going to be making a signing at some point. Uh, but as of right now, I'm pretty happy with those two guys as really the starters, if you will. Uh, Two-headed monster is what we're going to kind of go with here with the Titans. Uh, if we need to think about making a signing later, we will do it. But I did already make a signing here at fullback. Uh, we didn't have one. Uh, the Titans didn't have a fullback listed. Uh, one of the tight ends always stepped in there and or Derrick Henry, uh, which I didn't really love. But I feel like we've got some, you know, good formations kind of in weak and strong and, uh, you know, I formations where I think it's important to have a fullback. So I signed one, um, you know, this 70 overall, Freddie Stevens. Pass blocking is just kind of okay. Even run blocking is just kind of okay. You know, at a 67 overall, maybe not bad for a fullback, uh, but his lead blocking is an 81 overall. Uh, so that's kind of why I made the decision there to sign him specifically was specifically that. Uh, lead blocking at 81 overall seemed pretty darn good to me. Uh, so that's why we signed there Freddie Stevens. Wide receiver I'm pretty happy with, with as well. Rashard Matthews. Corey Davis, Taiwan Taylor, Tajay Sharp, and Campanero, uh, who is actually also our return man. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good group of wide receivers. We are going to have to make a decision about what we want to do with Rashard Matthews. Um, he is on the last year of his contract, so we're going to have to make a quick decision on whether or not we want to sign him. He is 28 years old. My first thought is that I'd like to sign him maybe for a couple more years and see where that puts us. Um, but we're going to have to make that decision here at the end of this season and or at some point during the season uh, if I so choose to do that, uh, which obviously means at some point we may be looking for a receiver. But as of right now, this is what we're running with. Uh, as we move on to tight end, we're going to have the same decision going on with Delaney Walker. He's on the last year of his contract, but he is getting older. He is 34 years old, 12 years in the league. Uh, but he's good. He's and he's still good for me. He continues to play well. He's kind of my favorite receiver for the Titans, really. Um, you know, he con constantly gets open, constantly catches the ball. You know, as a possession, really tight end, uh, which is kind of the scheme fit for the squad. And so, you know, I think if I can get another year or two out of him, I might try to do that. So then that way, maybe I can draft a tight end to kind of come in and maybe take over for him uh, if and when he retires. Uh, you know, I don't know that Jonu Smith would be ready, quite ready to do that, but who knows? Uh, we'll have to, uh, you know, wait and see, see how he plays out this season. But my thought is at some point we're going to need to be looking for uh, another tight end fairly soon. Um, Taylor Lewan, he is also on the last year of his contract as of Madden 19. Uh, because I did start with the preseason rosters. Uh, he does not have his new contract in there, so we are going to have to think about signing him. Uh, left guard here, probably our weakest spot on the line. Quentin Spain, just a 75 overall. Maybe not terrible, uh, but that would be better suited, obviously, for a backup. Uh, but that's going to be something we're going to have to address as well. He is also on the last year of his contract, as is uh, this guy, Pam Kevin Pampfile. Uh, so we'll have to make a decision here. Left guard is going to be something we're going to have to address here real soon. Uh, if we look here at the center position, Ben Jones, 80 overall with not a very good backup. Um, Josh Klein at right guard, 80 overall, and right tackle Jack Conklin at 81 overall. So, you know, the, the line doesn't look terrible. At least the starters don't, don't look too terrible. Uh, the issue is our depth. We do not have any depth at all on the line so if one of these guys gets injured we're in trouble <laughs> um, you know it's going to be tough uh, I've already kind of scoured the free agent market uh, and, it, and there's nothing that's really going to make it any better than what it currently is uh, so we're going to have to run with it and just hope for the best uh, I'm a little bit nervous about that but uh, but I don't know that we have a choice so we're going to have to go with it here. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, we've got Daquan Jones, 81 overall left in with a capable backup there in Austin Johnson. Right in, one of our captains, Jarrell Casey, 89 overall, looking pretty good there. Although Julius Wormsley, uh, obviously a little low there as a backup at 66 overall. Defensive tackle, the only one that we had on the Titans with the preseason roster was Benny Logan. Uh, and so I did sign C.J. Wilson and Marquavius Lewis 
uh, as backups there. So uh, that's kind of why those guys are there. Uh, and I think they're pretty capable backups. So uh, we're going to kind of run with that. But we're going to have to make a decision really quick uh, as it relates to the defensive tackle position as well. Uh, moving forward, what we're going to do, you know, in free agency and or the draft, because we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Obviously, these guys here are only on one year contracts. And I and I actually think that Benny Logan may also be. Um, let's take a look here. He may be on the last year of his contract as well. Um Let's just take a quick look, and he is. And so <laughs> moving into next year, we have no defensive tackles. So we're going to have to make some decisions there, maybe re-sign Benny Logan uh, if he'll have us, if you will, uh, and then make some other moves in free agency and or the draft. So that's just another area. Uh, left outside linebacker is yet another area that we're going to have to address. Uh, Derek Morgan, left outside linebacker, 76 overall. That's okay, but he is 29 years old. Obviously, uh, probably worth it to maybe re-sign him. He is on the last year of his contract as well uh, with not the best of capable backups there in Aaron Wallace. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to make a decision here real quick at left outside linebacker as well. So um, that is another thing to look at and address moving forward. Middle linebacker is looking pretty good with Wesley Woodyard, 80 overall, though he is getting up there in age uh, as well. Uh, though we did draft Rashawn Evans, but we are we do run a 3-4 defense, so we need a couple of middle linebackers. Um, Will Compton, fairly capable backup there, as well as Jayon Brown. Uh, some middle linebackers are looking pretty good there for this season, but we're going to have to think about what we're going to do here moving forward. Right outside linebacker, same situation. Brian Arakpo, uh, he, I think he is also on the last year of his contract. Uh, so we're going to have to make a decision uh, on him moving forward. Again, it's one of those deals where I feel like, yep, he's on the last year of his contract. Uh, you know, we're going to have to make a decision whether or not to make sense to try to sign him for another year or two, whether or not we let him go. Uh, the Titans did draft Harold Landry, uh, 75 overall. So that is a good, capable backup that maybe could step into that role moving forward. But again, Something else we're going to have to address here moving forward. Corners look pretty good with Malcolm Butler, Logan Ryan, and Adoree Jackson. Uh, pretty happy with how things look there. Kevin Byard at free safety with Lewis at 74 overall there. Jonathan Cyprian at an 82 overall looks pretty good, but maybe going to have to address the backup position there as well. Kicker is Ryan Suckup. Punter is Brett Kern. Uh, so that's kind of how the squad looks and some of the things that we need to address moving forward. Uh, again, we'll just kind of have to see how everything plays out. Taking a look here specifically at the depth chart. Obviously, Mariota and Lewis are going to be the starters with Derrick Henry at the power back position. We've got Matthews and Davis as our wide receivers. Delaney Walker at the tight end position. And then we kind of already talked about all of the line here. Uh, as we look at the defense, um, defensive line looks okay there, but we'll, except obviously maybe the Benny Logan there, but that's okay for this year. Corners obviously looking pretty good there with Malcolm Butler and Adoree Jackson. Uh, Cyprian and Kevin Byer looking pretty good there at the safety positions, uh, and linebackers are also looking pretty good uh, for this season. Special teams, I kind of mentioned Campanero is going to be our starter uh, at kick returning, we've got Suckup and Kern there kicking the ball. Specialists, uh, one of the things I uh, am really enjoying about Madden 19 are these specialist positions. So we've got our third down back in Deion Lewis. We've got uh, Derek Henry again at our power back. Slot wide receiver, I decided to put Davis in there. Kind of a bigger wide receiver, best catch in traffic ability. Uh, so that's kind of why I put him there. Logan Ryan at our slot corner position. And then our defensive line here, kind of rushing defensive line, if you will, kind of looks like that with Morgan Casey and Arakpo. Uh, and then I did make a change here. Madden 19 was suggesting putting in Woodyard as my sub linebacker, but I decided to put in Evans as he is better at uh, coverage skills. And so I thought that made more sense. Uh, so that's why he is there. And then we've got our practice squad, uh, which really isn't uh, very exciting. It was a bunch of guys that were on the squad uh, that are mostly rookies that I decided to uh, just drop down to the practice squad. 
uh, so we don't lose any of these guys. Again, there wasn't really anybody in the free agent market that made sense uh, to move into our squad really anywhere, whether or not that be the practice squad or even uh, our actual squad. So uh, we're just going to kind of go with it as is for now. Um, I did want to take a quick look at our first opponent and our schedule for the season. So let's take a quick look at that team schedule here. Uh, we're going to open ob obviously with the Dolphins, and then we get our first home game against the Texans. And then we go to the Jaguars. We've got the Eagles uh, at the Bills, then the Ravens, then at the Chargers. Then we get our bye week in week eight, which is kind of nice, kind of middle of the season. Uh, and then we go to the Cowboys in a Monday night game, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and then we go right against the Patriots, then at the Colts, then we get another Monday night game against the Texans, uh, and then we've got a Sunday game uh, against the Jets, and then a Thursday night game against the Jaguars. Uh, that'll be uh, fun seeing those crazy uh, colored uniforms there. Uh, and then we got at the Giants, and then versus the Redskins, and then versus the Colts. So a couple of home games to end the season, which could be vital uh, in our quest, obviously, to at least make the playoffs, hopefully. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Dolphins. Uh, you know, as I stated, I kind of started <clears throat> this franchise in the preseason, but I kind of simmed it, paid attention to uh, really the Dolphins and where they stood um, offensively and defensively. And ultimately, they didn't uh, look that great offensively kind of bottom of the barrel passing and running um, but they did look better defensively kind of top of the barrel passing and running so uh, couldn't it be in a, a kind of a tough matchup for us but we'll kind of have to wait and see I did want to take a quick look at their lineup let's uh, skip down here to the Dolphins obviously they've got Tannehill at quarterback uh, and then they've got running backs Kenyon Drake and Frank Gore, um, as well as Callan Ballage there. So that they've got some good running backs. They do have a fullback in Wellman. Wide receiver-wise, Amendola is their top wide receiver. He's their slot wide receiver. Uh, and then they've got a ton of speed on the outside with Kenny Stills and Parker. Uh, and this guy, Jakeem Grant, uh, he, he looks fast. <laughs> Tight end wise, they look pretty good as well with AJ Derby and the rookie Gasecki. Uh, so that will be a tough matchup for us. We do have some good safeties, so hopefully they can play some good coverage. Uh, Tunsil at a 77 overall at left tackle. Left guard looks really good with Josh Sitton at 88. Center with Daniel Kilgore at a 73 overall. Right guard, uh, not very good with Ted Larson at a 67 overall. We'll have to remember that in our play. Maybe try to at attack that side there with kind of their center guards not looking the greatest. Uh, right tackle looks pretty good there with Jawan James and an 84 overall. And then Cameron Wake and William Hayes looking pretty good there at left end. Right end looking pretty good as well with Robert Quinn and backup Charles Harris. Defensive tackle. Maybe not quite as good uh, with Jordan Phillips, a left outside linebacker. A little bit of a step down here with Anthony at a 72 overall. Middle linebacker, McMillan and Allen, 73 and 70. And then just a 73 overall, Kiko Alonso. So my first thought is if we can get past that first line of defense there on the line, uh, we're going to have a good chance to hopefully... Uh, get some good yardage. We'll have to wait and see. Corners don't necessarily look that great either. 79 overall. Kind of a little bit of speed. Man coverage, zone coverage, kind of in the 80s, low 80s. Maybe not terrible. Maybe not terrible, but uh, something to keep in mind. Free safety looking pretty good there with Ron Parker at 82 overall. And Rashad Jones at a 91 overall there at strong safety, looking pretty darn good. Their kicker is Blair Walsh. They actually still have two kickers. And Jason Sanders, interesting. And their punter is Matt Hack. All right, and they've got uh, they've got yet another kicker on their practice squad. Practice squad. So they've got three kickers. So not very good 
CPU management there. That seems a little bit silly. But in any case, that is going to do it. I did, I, like I said, I just wanted to kind of give you a quick rundown. That is going to be our intro. Uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to our first game against the Dolphins. Again, we're running with armor and sword sliders with IMAX rosters and the adjustments to juke and spin. If you have any questions, there is a link in the description uh, to his sliders and all of that stuff. The other big question is, is how do you guys want me to present this to you here on YouTube. I'm going to do live streams of my games on Twitch uh, and then upload it to YouTube later. Uh, my first thought is, is that I'm just going to show you the highlights on YouTube. The question is one game, short videos, or maybe a couple games, two, three, four games with maybe some, you know, slightly longer videos. Uh, so let me know down in the description what you would like to see. Again, I hope you guys are excited. If you have not checked out the trailer, please do so. Uh, and I will see you for game one, year one, in our Tennessee Titans franchise here with Mike Vrabel. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you next time.